Welcome. We're back. <laughs> We're here. Another week. Round six. Can you believe it? Uh, it's Pete joining commentary today for your feature match of the week, Dota 2, with this guy, TCG from Fox Gaming. Hi, TCG. Hello. How you doing? And uh, a really fresh face on the couch today. We've got Adzi in. So good to have you along. Thank you very much. Thanks, um, TCG will be providing the play-by-play -play for our Dota 2 match. Adzi, you've got the analysis down, Pat. Yep. Before we actually get into this, Hale School WA taking on St. Eugene's of Queensland. Thank you for joining us here at twitch.tv slash flak test. Uh, we've got plenty on the way. Some news about Valve's later Dota 2 changes to the 2018-19 Pro Circuit. We'll get your thoughts on exactly what those are all about, what they actually mean for the Pro Circuit, the teams, a lot of flex going on. But uh, just fill them in, TCG, really quickly. A bit of history about yourself with Dota. I've uh, been playing Dota for about four years now. Playing for a uh, you know semi-competitive team in the uh, Australian Esports Federation Div 2. And I've uh, done a bit of casting here and there. And that's about it. I'm a... Uh, I guess, you know, my Dota repertoire, my, you know, was a Divine 5, you know, ranked player on the, um, you know, Oz. Which is really good. Okay, yeah, which yeah, is, good. Which thank is, you, thank you, because yeah. I have no idea about any of this, that's why you guys are here. <laughs> which is pretty tip top, but last yeah. night, the, um, or yesterday, the season rolled over, so I'm, I'm re, re ranked. Starting again? Well, yeah. uh, they put me back down to Divine 3, I've already climbed up to Divine 4, but. Nice. You know, very, you know. So hang on a sec, wait. The season <laughs> started over again yesterday. Yeah. You've already climbed to Divine 4. Well, they put they like recalibrated me back at Divine 3. Okay, so yeah. I climbed up one more yeah. rank. So. Uh, Adzi, fill yeah. us in. Yeah, been playing for about five years. Uh, all just casually, but I'm slightly obsessed because I've put a bunch of hours into it and it's been a lot of fun. I'm not a Divine 5 player. I'm only a 4K player, so I'm a bit of a scrub myself, but yeah, I just so. love the game and the complexity and everything else. Yeah. Like, it's really, really cool. So, so uh, Divine 5 player... Uh, 4K player yeah. doesn't even have the game installed, so <laughs> I don't know what that makes me if you're a scrub. But anyway, yeah, yeah. Uh, guys, uh, just a little bit of news that we want to uh, expand upon because we touched on this in the top three news, which you'll see right now. You're watching this live on Twitch, but you will see this across all of Flak Tech's socials, across Twitch, YouTube, everything. When we release round six of our weekly TV show, the Flak Test Weekly Patch, we talk a bit of news in there and then we expand upon it here. Valve's Dota 2 changes to the 2018. 19 Pro Circuit. I'll just go through these really quickly. Flexible rosters is what they're going for. Teams able to make changes to their rosters. Now, qualifying points assigned to teams instead of players, and teams take a point hit for lineup changes, but once we enter finals, and of course the international, teams are locked in. No more flexing in regards to who's representing each team. Just want to get your thoughts on this. We'll start with you, TCG. So it's, as soon as the qualifiers start, there's no more that's it. Not, you can't flex your play, you can't change players anymore. This is through your qualifying mm. season, and then finals are here. Can't change. So players. it's basically as soon as qualifiers start, it's back to how it was. That's right. No more switching. And we were looking before. Yeah. It seems to be you change one player, you get a twenty percent point hit on that team, which is massive. Yeah, that's huge. So it's, it's, it's you know difference. it's it's flexible, but there's you know questionably so I, how flexible it is. I like, guess you'd be balancing, you'd be looking at the players that may be on the table and going, okay, is it worth it to take this particular things. player yeah. versus how far we are into the season of the pro circuit, so on and yeah. so forth, for taking the 20% hit? Yeah, like is it a good trade here right now, a good, a good option to take away those points? And sometimes it might be. So say if you get a really good character or um, player like Miracle, if you can get that guy across, you just take the hit, mm -hmm. you know, you just do it. So but like you only you couldn't take the hit if it's going to knock you out of the top yeah. 12 teams or whatever it is, right? Yeah. So yeah. if you're a really top team and you're willing to take this hit to take a really better player on there, but the thing is that most of those top teams, they've already got five really, really good players, right? Yeah, right. So the chance of you wanting to switch out a, you know, a top tier player, top tier mid player for another miracle say yep. it seems less likely you know yeah. and so, considering yeah. it is a game that is built around playing together communicating together that real strategic type of play I mean you only really ever want to make these changes if you're going to early in the season yeah. right because you want to yeah. be playing together for quite some time before yeah, finals comes around Yeah. so it seems to me like the option now is there to do that you know flexibility but it's quite it's quite punishing mm -hmm. and what the other change was if you don't play with the, your rostered five for the international 40% hit. Gee, yeah. So like if you that's big. if yeah. you can take that change to still get in there, you're already in the top what four teams in the world. Yep. And the top four teams in the world probably not going to change their rosters. Yep. So yeah. it's more like the the possibilities there now for those, you know, tier two and three teams. But for the tier one teams, 
it seems unlikely that they're going to change it. Yeah, yeah. adds in. Yeah. Well, much Maybe the same add. thoughts. And just to add to it is that when you have these top tier players, they've been in boot camp for like you know four or five months, just playing. Uh, with them sit like playing even longer maybe since yeah. last international yeah, since the last you know? international yeah so like playing them and playing other pro players so they know exactly how they work together and if you're going to try and swap that out you're going to lose all of that um, cohesiveness so that's something that you're going to lose and they say oh you can do it but I don't think too many people with like maybe the lower tier teams might take that up if they can get somebody on if they're going to pay them a bunch of money or some of like that guys uh, we're going to move on from that thank you very much for your thoughts because we've yeah. got a match to bring you right now it is Dota 2 week right here on twitch.tv slash flag test thank you for joining us yeah. and watching us live make sure you keep across all of our socials for all the info but it's Hale School from WA taking on St. Eugene's in Queensland as we move across to the match and it starts to get ready yeah. I just want to talk about something really quickly while we bring the match up and uh, move across to that screen. And Adzi, your brother is actually the teacher yeah. rep for Hale School. Yeah, yeah. Is, and he's is he coaching? Is he's he coaching, coaching the Hale coaching team. Corner? Yeah, he's there right now. Right, Just keeping so him on line. Bit you know? of bias potentially here, oh, buddy. I, I was going to say I'm going for Hale. Like that's really cool. <laughs> you know, if I don't, like I might be in trouble. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> is, is he much of a Dota player? Uh, he's a big Dota player like yeah. me. Yeah, but he works a lot, so he tries to. Like everybody here, I suppose, tries to fit it in and see what they can do. But yeah, yep. he's really loving it. So it's yeah. a bit of a casual. It's not a lazy. Oh, he's a casual like me. like me. Yeah, yeah. Who can just like, play ten hours a day? Yeah. So like, he was happy that the esports team came up for um, for Hale because of League of Legends. Like, it kind of started that off. But now he's really happy because Dota is his game. So he's like, that's great. I guess it's pretty good. Yeah. 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 League of Legends was close, but it wasn't his true passion. It's not. No. no. Well, and Dota too. I mean, it's such a fascinating game because yeah. it is so incredibly complex. Yep. You know, uh, we're going to move across now to the Dota Two match and actually get stuck into this. This is so exciting. And this is the part where I shut my mouth pretty much, guys, because I have no idea what I'm looking at. I'm just here to do the stuff either side of you guys who actually know what you're doing. We're going through picks and bands now. If you want to take us through it, TCG, kick us off. No worries. Okay, so if you, also, P, if you've got any questions, you know, feel free, but not too many. It's not How a training session. It's not a training session. Okay. He stands for Defense of the Ancients. Thank you. That's yeah. it. It's two big ancients on either side. That's yep. the main building. If that dies, you lose. Yeah. Got Let, it. Let's go. Easy. Yeah. Easy. Not a problem. <laughs> I'm doing this now. Yeah. Yes. All right. So to start off with, we're playing captain's mode. Uh -huh. So if you don't know, you know, there's multiple different modes in Dota. There's like, you know, all pick, which is what you play most of the time. Yep. Just pick whatever hero you want. You can ban one or two heroes at the start. It's what you're playing if you're playing casually. Mm -hmm. Captain's mode is when you're getting serious. So you have one captain. You can see the little uh, crown next to their names. All right. We've got Vox Populi and Spooder Boy. Yep. So as you can see, <laughs> up the top, the Radiant, that is St. Eugene's Esports. And then obviously down the bottom in red, Hail School is Hail School. Yeah. So uh, that captain, they'll be you know chatting with their team, seeing which heroes they want to take out of the uh, potential heroes to pick and to field, and which heroes they want to uh, so they want to ban them out, and which heroes they want to pick. Yep. So, you know, there's one guy who's in charge, mm -hmm. which is much different to, you know, the casual games you play when everyone's clowning around. Uh, yeah. Adzi, just quickly, the bands that we're seeing right now, before we start talking about those, are there any bands in particular that you think, maybe thinking about the current meta or something like that that you're yeah, hoping to like see? If, if they want to ban out, like, the current meta, like, the current strong heroes is something like Axe, uh, Doom, and uh, Visage. Visage is a mid-core uh, hero is actually really, really strong right now. Mm -hmm. So they'll want to ban those out, but... They're not banning them out. They're banning out a, a, a potential position four so somebody can help out the carry uh, in the Sand King and uh, a mid-hero, Storm Spirit. And I'm not sure why they're banning out the Spider or Broodmother because that one's not very uh, a high-powered hero oh, at I the guess moment, Visage, but it might be some strategy. Visage thing. and Brood? Like, Visage is a bit of a, you know, one of those mid-heroes. Yeah. It's a bit... Um, if someone can play it well, it's a bit yeah. cheesy. You yeah, know, a bit yeah, more yeah. of a... Yeah. Um, you know, like a, a cheeky strategy you might not expect to pull out yeah. and it kind of runs you over, which is yeah. the same kind of thing Broodmother does, you know? Yeah. If someone does practice it and you're not ready for it, you pretty much just lose. So they're kind of preparing to not... They want a fair game, you know? You ban out these unfair heroes. Yeah. And we've got a first pick, Morphling, yep. which I'm a big fan of. I've been spamming that hero to try and learn it lately. Yep. And if he gets a good start, he is really, really strong. Yeah. Got a DK mid, or a Dragon Knight mid, I oh. reckon, with a Morphling safe. What do you reckon? It's a Morphling... Um, um, you can switch it up, yeah, but it'd be, yeah. you know, 90% this Dragon Knight will be running mid, and the Morphling will be running safe lane. Yeah. So we're seeing some really different strategies come out. We've got um, uh, Radiant, what's Radiant? Queensland team. 
We've got St. Eugene's That's coming right. out. Yep. Took me a while there. Yeah. St. Eugene's coming out. They're picking two core heroes. So straight off the bat. And Hale responding, they're picking the two support heroes. So you immediately, you look at St. Eugene's, you know exactly what they're doing. You know, almost 9% of the time. Mm-hmm. And Hale School, they've revealed nothing. Yeah. You don't know, you know, Shadow Shaman, SD, they're support heroes. You know, what, you know, mostly what they do, but you can run a SD with a dual lane off lane. You can even run him off lane. So it's a bit more, you know, Hale School's hiding their strategy. Yep. And uh, St. Eugene's coming out and these are the strong heroes we want. You know, yeah. You know what we're doing, but we're going to beat you with it anyway, which is real confident. You know, very, very confident because they can actually say if they bring out their um, show their cards now, like what they um, hail school can do is uh, counter those heroes, so they can pick heroes that will offer disables or offer stuns or, or stuff like that. So, considering that um, Saint Eugene's has virtually shown. Uh, two fifths of their hand, yeah. right? And Hail School have not done that. What are you expecting to see Hail School pull out uh, for their last three picks against what they now see as the Morphling and the DK? Yeah. So they've already got a pretty, pretty good counter to uh, Morphling, the Shadow Demon and Shadow Shaman. Yeah. Like, uh, Shadow Demon has a thing called Disrupt, which puts them into a ball, and when they pop out, it creates two illusions. And if Morphling uh, if they're going to play him how I think they're going to play, he hits really hard. So basically, he's just going to hit himself really, really hard with those illusions. And then Shadow Shaman can hold him in place for a while. So that's a strong disable and a strong setup. And using Morph against himself pretty much to do that. So that's already really good. Yeah. And uh, one hero I'll be looking at here, um, hey, also, I'm sure they've got a uh, Outworld Devourer player. So it's an intelligence hero, hits for pure damage, yeah. which uh, Morphling, he gets a lot of armor because he has so many stats, which is also why he's bad against Shadow Demon. But Dragon Knight, he's just a naturally really bulky, strong hero. He has a, has a spell that gives him more and more armor. So OD, he doesn't care about armor at all. He kind of cuts through it. And then he uh, has a big ultimate, which smashes you, deals damage based on how much more intelligence he has than you. Neither of those two heroes are very smart heroes. They don't right, build much okay. intelligence. <laughs> so I'd be a bit worried about an OD coming out. I probably yeah. would have liked to see an OD ban over the Visage and Viper bans. Yeah. But it's yeah. interesting, as you mentioned, Visage is getting banned out. Yeah. So, yeah. um, yeah. Saint Eugene's they just they just want to play a nice casual morphling DK game. They don't want any cheese coming their way. No. And no. a Ricky coming out. So they're yeah. the ones doing the cheesing. Yeah, that's great. Ricky and Clockwork. It's really um, I'm looking here with Hail School. They've picked up their two supports and they picked Clockwork, which most recently is being played as a Pos four support. But it's pretty much definitely going to be off-lane. a Pos three offlane now. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, if I'm a morphling. And I'm, you know, wanting to farm up lots of creeps and get and get fat and get strong, which is how you play Morphling. Yeah. And I see a clockwork in my lane against me, I'm chilling. Yeah. I'm feeling real good about it. Yeah. Morphling, yeah, uh, you can do. Yeah, clockwork, he locks you in the cogs with a battery assault. Yeah. yeah. You have waveform as Morphling, you turn into a wave, get out of there, you don't care about the cogs at all. You, and you, you can just sit in there with him and kill him inside the cogs. Yeah. Unreal. So yeah. clockwork... I'd say maybe a bit of a bit of a questionable choice here from Hale, yeah. but maybe they've got something, you know, I don't, I'm not sure about. Some sort of big, ear, like maybe OD might yeah. come out, so they might have some sort of AOE spear, so we want here them blocking. Here comes the next one. Legion Ooh, Commander. Oh, okay. Well, it's getting, Hale's getting crazy here, because yeah. Legion also usually plays an offlane. So they've like, got two offlane heroes, two support heroes. And that could be a jungle Legion Commander. What do you reckon? If I see jungle Legion, I'm just going to, you're gonna, I'm going to freak out. You're going to rage quit? You know? It's not, <laughs> you know, exactly. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start typing and start, yeah. like we were in a pub. Yeah. Start yeah. flaming it. No, no Legion jungle. I mean, they, they might be able to run a tri-lane bottom with Clock, Shadow Demon, and Shadow Shaman. Uh, for, our, for our more casual hosts, Pete, yeah. if you don't know, Legion Jungle is a bit of a meme. Yeah. Right. In, okay. in, in yeah. casual games. i got to admit, while you were saying that, as Legion Commander came out, you were saying that, out of the corner of my eye, our CEO, Brett, um, is he's running the camera today. He's a Dota 2 player. And yeah. out of the corner of my eye, as you guys began to talk about that, I could see the smirk on his face. <laughs> so clearly, it's it's quite the meme. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I think, from what I've read about Hale School, uh, they're actually doing what they are. They gave us a little info about themselves. They say they run basically three support heroes and two carry heroes. Mm-hmm. So they run like their offlane is more of a supporty type hero. So they just have their mid making lots of space, is what the guy said. It seemed like they have a pretty good game plan, by the way, so they seem pretty confident. Yep. But they're basically four of their heroes will go make space, go be annoying, you know, go fights like that. And they'll have one carry just sitting there getting fat, like a morphling type hero, you know, but for the other team. Gotcha. So like they've got their cast already, right? These four heroes down the bottom here, Shadow Shaman, Shadow Demon, Clockwork Legion, they're gonna go make space, go get into fights, while a, probably a hard carry comes out. And we've got a sniper, sniper. pick. 
Yeah, so it's going to be a um, support morph, I reckon. This is crazy. Yeah, there's a, well, it's either that or five cores, which I'm, is going to be interesting to... So we got one team with pretty much all not farmy support heroes, and then one team of all farmy heroes. All right, cool. And it's so, going to be a carry Legion commander. Yeah, yeah. With the two supports. Okay, the I'm, lane I'm, with the I'm loving this. Lane. This is yeah. going to be crazy. Why are you loving this? Why Is it because it's just... it's like, These picks that you're seeing, these combinations... Is it because they're just so unusual? Is that you yeah. don't see this often? Yeah, no one's doing this. You know, right. this is more. This is what you'd see in more of a casual kind of pub game. You know, we will own that at Flak Test. Nobody is doing this. We're bringing you a yeah, well yeah, first. Yeah, yeah. Well, well first here, guys. <laughs> yeah, we'll yeah. take it. To be fair, uh, Morphling support is it's sometimes done. You know, yep. but that leaves your support heroes as a Morphling and a Ricky, uh, Rick, Ricky Maru, the little stealth guy there with the two knives. That's not, you know, you wouldn't look at that as the strongest support duo. Mm -hmm. yeah. as, as, but you look over at Hail School, you've got a Shadow Shaman and a Shadow Demon. Those heroes don't need any items, they don't need anything. They're just great support heroes. They've got really strong abilities, you know? Yeah. So um, I'm feeling already, I'm feeling a little worried for St. Eugene's here. It yeah. feels like Hail School, they've, uh, they've done what they set out to do. They had their plan, yeah. they stuck to it. And you can even see um, the captain here, Vox Populi. He's put himself on an invoker. You know, real big, showy, playmaking hero. He's feeling pretty confident about himself, you know? Yeah. Adzi, what do you reckon? Oh, so with the Faceless Void pick, I reckon that's going to be a off-lane uh, Faceless Void. And running, like, carries or cores like that off-lane is not too good anymore because so, of where the creeps meet, which is really close to the safe lane tower. Yeah, off-lane's real hard. Make, yeah, it's real hard now. And it's going to be very difficult for Faceless Void to actually get any farm. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about some of these key words that you're talking about. Off yeah. lane. Talk to me. What's an off lane? Well, the camera is on the off lane right now for the dire side or the top side, and uh, you can see down the bottom left you got like the little red dots. Those are towers, and so that leads down for the dire to the off lane, or sometimes it's called the suicide lane because it's really hard to play, because it's usually you by yourself or with somebody else, and you've got a long way to run back to your tower. You've got the mid lane, which is the one that DK and Ricky Mario are running up right now and that's usually just two solo people taking uh teeing it off against each other trying to win we, we got the uh, classic it's not australian dota without a pause at the start of the game yeah, yeah. so they've ticked that <laughs> off you know we know it's Oz, Oz dota players even in the league i play in if there's not a pause at the start of the game something's gone wrong so we know? are okay we are taking a pause here and <laughs> this gives us a, a, a great opportunity as we saw vox populi um, has just taken off for a minute, but we'll be back. This gives us a great opportunity to continue to talk about the things that we're seeing on the screen. For those of you watching right now who don't know much about Dota 2, because it is a fresh game. It's, it's our MOBA pick for the season 2018 league, but it is a fresh game. Um, we'll just go back to that screen if we can, just to have a look at this. And take you through, I know, look, game is paused. It's not the most exciting thing to see. <laughs> but I want to talk to the people who are watching who don't know much about Dota 2. Oh, and stuff's already happening. It's already kicking off with right. the pause. Yeah, well, right. let's, let's hear this. I mean, what's, what's kicking off? What stuff is already happening? So to, to cover the lanes real quick, so you've got top lane at the top there, mid lane in the mid, and bot lane at the uh, bot. Mm -hmm. So then top lane is safe lane for Dyer, the red team. And it's off lane for Radiant. And then vice versa with the bot. Gotcha. So usually a safe lane is a lane you have, you know, your carries there. You have the two supports looking after you and it's all safe. That's been switched up a bit with the current meta. Usually running two dual lanes. So two heroes versus two heroes. Yep. So it doesn't really matter so much which lane it is. You know, you can have your off lane being quote unquote safer or whatever. And especially in this game where the picks are so crazy, lanes aren't going to really matter too much. It's going to be the heroes matching up. Mm. But what I've noticed, I'm sure Ads has noticed... We've got some crazy item choices yeah. coming out at the start yeah. of the game. So, uh, Adzi, at the start of the game, what do you usually start the game with in your inventory? Well, you want to go to lane with some regen, and which is usually tango, so you use tangos to eat trees, and that'll bump your health up very, very slowly. Maybe some damage items, or, for example, if you're going to go mid and you're a intelligence hero, you want some sort of intelligence buff, so it increases your damage. Seeing five salves on a Ricky is a little bit odd. It's it's you absolutely just, absolutely crazy. It's I would a say a little bit odd. Why yeah, is it crazy? So usually you want you know, most important thing when you're in the lane there, you don't want to leave the lane, which is you know five salves is good for that because you keep staying in there. Yeah. But you want to be able to hit other heroes and hit creeps to get the. 
the final hit on the creep, so the, you get the gold to yeah. buy more items okay. and progress through your items and progress into the into the mid game, into the later stages of the game. Okay. But if you have no items that give you any stats, which gives you more damage to hit the last hit on the creep, if you run into another hero who has, like this void here has, you can see, a stout shield, which gives you a chance to block when you're getting hit. If you're a Ricky with five salves and no stout shield hitting a void, the void... Your five salves can be as many salves as you want it to be. He's blocking every second gotcha. hit, okay. taking some damage off you, and you can't get any more last hits. And So it's a very, uh, you know, also tangos are more gold efficient. So five salves is a crazy, it's wild. Yeah. One second, zero. We're into the game. It has begun. As we mentioned, we've got TCG and Adzi in commentary today. TCG will be bringing you the play-by-play. -play. Adzi with the uh, anal analyst stuff in between. Take it away, TCG. Okay, uh, just as, as we're kicking off, Adzi, who are you, who's your vote for? Hail, based on the build, uh, based on the early, uh, heroes and whatnot. They've got a well-rounded team with some supports, given some vision, okay. lockdown, and uh, I'd have to go with Hail as well. Judging yeah. from these, uh, from the heroes and from the island builds, I'd probably tip my hand towards them. Yeah, and but I've seen crazy stuff, right? Like anything can happen in these types of, of games. Of course, so anything happen. Yeah. Uh, already, we're seeing a bit of weirdness coming out. Uh, I'm not sure where. We've got the purple player. What's what's he on? He's on Ricky. Who's the player in the back? He's not even Moving, in a yeah. lane. Yeah. And so that's very unusual. Yeah. Pete, usually you'd see the heroes go to where the, the creeps are dying to get XP to level up. Yep. Yeah. Being in your base, uh, it's basically the equivalent of being AFK. Gotcha. So I'm not sure what he's doing there. Yeah. We had DK walk to mid, leave mid, and run up to top lane. And we got we got we got the invoker, the pink player, uh, in mid by himself, just having the time of his life. Yeah, he's so, got free free farm. Right, yeah. last minute rotations, just guys freaking out a little bit. Maybe, yeah, maybe. I'm, the yeah, communication's maybe not quite there. Yeah, maybe yeah, he I'm honestly not sure. A, um, oh, the morphling has got his agi morph on. You do, he he's permanently agi morphed. He's teleporting back to the tower just to get away from the clockwork, I suppose. Maybe okay. it's a bit of a misclick. Uh, yeah, there. Yeah, he's left his uh, Agi morph on, which gives you less and less health, P. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you leave that on too long, you can just be hit once and die. So you uh, don't want to. He's already got some crazy, crazy concepts coming out, and we got Ricky, and Ricky is dead. Ricky's dead. First yeah. blood for Invoker, uh, Vox Populi, the uh, the captain of Hail. He is having his dream game right yeah. now. Yeah. You can see him top of the net worth that graph there. How much he's worth. He hasn't missed. Barely any CS. There's a oh. second pick. Second. And Hale is on a roll. Ah, good picks, yep. DK goes down. Yep. So the setup there with the that little sort of ball lightning thing that came there is called a Sunstrike. So what you can do is you can set up with um, Shadow Demon, chuck him in that ball and there's a particular amount of time. And when he comes out, you can land the Sunstrike, which was that ball thing, and just hit him all at the same time. And it guarantees a, a kill for Invoker, who's just going to become huge if they just leave him mid. Um, it's a little bit odd that they would leave him there like that. So what I'd really like to see from St. Eugene's here is, firstly, I'd love to see the heroes get to get to the lanes so they can get some XP and get some levels. Yeah. But I'd also like to see they need to protect their Morphling. So they want to their Morphling bot. Morphling versus Clockwork, it's usually a pretty good matchup. But it looks like he's already been forced out of his lane and he's forced to go mid versus this Invoker who's been there the whole time by himself. And Morphling's not, not, not a bad matchup. But he really, unless this is a glitch on our screen, he really wants to press, I'm not sure what key he has it bound to, it's usually D, but he wants to stop morphing agility. Because if he's permanently morphing agility, he's going to be really low HP, and it's going to make it like, he hits really hard, but he also gets hit really, really hard. Yeah. And he's off to the top. We got, we've got musical lanes, Adzi <laughs> and Pete, coming out from St. Eugene's. Yeah. They're not really sure what they want to do. Yeah, I can see that the DK has uh, got a Gloves of Haste, which he can then build into another item called a Midas, which will make his farm and experience go up a lot faster. He's currently run up to the clockwork and is... And he's dead. He's, he's dead, yeah. yeah. He didn't, uh, didn't expect the uh, amount of damage that the clockwork could pull out, maybe. There's a bit of a... I feel like there's a bit of... I mean, maybe it's nerves yeah. coming out from St. Eugene's, but um, they're, getting a bit, they're getting a bit outclassed here guys yeah. by uh, old Hale. You know, Hale's, Hale's doing what they don't want to do and St. Eugene's are not really putting up much of a, not putting any cogs in the gears here. Yeah. So he's chucked him in the cog he's trying to... Coming in. 
Sniper's not moving. Sniper run. Yeah. Oh, I'm not sure what's happening here, but Sniper's just sitting there and getting hit in the head. What is a Sniper doing that close to a team fight as well? Yeah, yeah at the very beginning of the game as well, where he's not doesn't hit too hard. I mean, it's not even so much a team fight. It's just one hero well, yeah, who he wants to walk away one. from. Yeah. You don't want to sit there and get punched. You know, like... You, yeah. he's, Sniper was effectively away from keyboard there. You know, I'm not sure if he's looking at something else or you know, have an argument with his team what's going on. Yeah. But you definitely want to be clicking buttons and clicking your mouse when you're playing Dota. Yeah. And it appears that Sniper was, was, was not doing that, which I would not recommend. Yeah. I mean, look at the difference with the net worth already. Um, as we mentioned, the top left, the top yeah. four are from Hale School. Yeah. I mean, they're just at yeah. uh, top five now. Every single hero from Hale is above every single hero from St. Eugene's. Yeah. So for those watching who aren't too familiar with this, what does net worth mean? What are we looking at there? Well, it's the amount of gold. Uh, so when you last hit a creep, you'll get gold and you get experience from that. And so that'll eventually tick up where you can, uh, for example, 2,000 or 3,000 uh, gold coins for Invoker. Because he's hit so many last hits, he's actually quite high up. And you'll also get money over time. So you don't actually have to get last hits, which, which will take care of that. So that's what the net worth is. Just, just a snapshot of how well the farming is going. Yeah, so you, you yeah. get money over time, but really getting last hits is how you want to get the money. You don't want to so much sit there and get your money built up. That's what kind of supports will do. But if any three of the core heroes, you want to be getting those last hits. It's, it's pretty important. So um, we can see that there's a 7k gold lead for Hail School at five minutes, which is, you know, pretty, I'd say pretty, pretty unheard of, you know? So... um. St. Yeah. Eugene's going to have to pull out something pretty amazing if they want to come back in this game here. Yeah. Because already, Morphling's in trouble. Waveform, Morphling, Waveform, Waveform, Waveform. Oh, no. I'm not, I think it might have been on cooldown since he used it before. I think he was on cooldown. And that's what Stands the Invoker picked on. So this Invoker, Vox, he's run up. He's made Mor Morphling wave away. And then he just waited and come and killed him next time. Yeah. So a bit of a, a bit of an outplay coming out in mid. Shadow Demon's being really annoying at top. Ricky doesn't know what to do with these four salves. He can salve up the uh, void, actually, before he can come back in again. But that will go, that's going to happen to him again. Yeah. And sniper's not. See, you're a sniper, Pete. You got real. You're a sniper, right? You got really long range. Mm. And I would love to see sniper just oh, hitting yeah. these guys. <laughs> but he's not. <laughs> he he's not doing anything. <laughs> he's not doing any. This, this okay. shadow shaman. <laughs> I think he's actually trolling the sniper because <laughs> yeah. he's just grabbing this, grabbing this. Usually, you want to use your spells in the enemy heroes, Pete. Yeah. So and these shackle. Kind of yeah. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. these catapults here, they have massive spell resistance to do less damage to them. And this Shadow Shaman is just running up and just grabbing this catapult for, I'm, I'm going to go out on the limb and say, basically no reason. Right. And the sniper's just watching. And you, you got, you know, if you're a sniper, you want to you shoot him a little bit with yeah. your, little, your little pea shooter. Yeah. And nothing much happened. We've got a Morphling with a Null Talisman, which is an a intel item, and Morphling's an agility hero. Not usually the item you see him go. Could have been a misclick at the start of the game, but it's not helping him out much at the moment. Yeah, Intel yeah. also stood. Oh, here we go. Oh, combo, Sunstrike coming out. Oh, yeah. Lovely. See, St. Hales. St. Hales. <laughs> Combine the two teams. Hales School. They've uh, picked a hero here, Lynch Commander. He can duel you, and it forces you to fight him for four seconds. And the Invoker, who's playing mid, he has this global ability called Sunstrike. Does heaps of damage, but it's got a two-second delay. So you've got to choose somewhere on the map. Pick a spot. Two seconds later, a massive sun strike comes out of the sky. And oh, more kills for... Sniper's dead again. Ricky's dead again. Yeah. And we haven't seen one pick... Um, from St. From Eugene's. St. Eugene's on, on Hale. So they're, get, they're, yeah. they're getting... They're getting clowned they're getting, on. Yes. Yeah. Unfortunately. Which is... Um, I mean... I, I would say that the, the uh, Void's actually doing not too bad. He's managing to stay in the, the hard lane getting farm, he's got some decent items-ish, you know, he's got the uh, wand which we can bump up his health. When, so when someone uses a, a spell, it puts a little charge into the wand down the bottom right there. Yep, so and got eight wand charges. Yeah, so then you can use that to bump your health and your mana up, Ooh, just Morphling, in case. Morphling goes down again mid as we're chatting. That's unfortunate for him. He's getting uh, Vox's, he's having a great time mid. Yeah. Uh, also, as you mentioned, the Void uh, from St. Eugene's and the DK from St. Eugene's, Dragon Knight. Dragon Knight's sitting in the jungle. He's not. He's chilling. He's not helping his team out. He's letting them. He's letting them flounder in the lanes. But uh, he's getting some. Uh, he's getting some items in the jungle. Yeah. So maybe he can come out and make some big plays. Yeah. Well, got the shadow demons now stalking the void as well. Yeah. 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 What I'd really love to see from um, Eugene's here, I'd love to see them come out and maybe maybe try and kill this invoker. 
Yeah. This invoker's worth a lot of money. Yeah. It would make a big net worth swing if you could kill him. He's got a Midas. He's got he's level 9 already. So if you, if you take him out of the game, it's going to give your team a lot of gold, a lot of levels. Oh, Sniper again. Is that Sniper? Yes. Yeah, Sniper. The dive under the tower. Um, um, and then the Shadow Shaman. Shadow Shaman dies to the tower. Yeah. You, you, don't, you don't care too much at that point, you know? But there is St. Eugene's first kill on the board. Sniper, Sniper buys back. Sniper buys back. He wants to go back straight into lane. Get some more XP, I yeah. assume. But, um, uh, so, Pete, if you're, um, if you're a Sniper, you really don't want to play versus a Clockwork. Mm. Now, oh, Sniper might yeah. have been making some, making, some, so making some questionable plays at the start of the game, but in general, Clockwork's a pretty great counter to Sniper until you can get an item called Four Staff to get yourself out of the cogs. But um, right. this Sniper, with the start he's having, he's not going to get that Four Staff anytime soon, so he is, he's in trouble. Yeah. So and in that regard, would you rotate him then? You'd move into another lane. Uh, well, he's going to have a hard... Most of the lanes... He's going to have a hard time against either everything. Way. All the lanes have gone yep. so bad already that you're going to have a hard time. Some very interesting item choices coming out from DK. Adzi, he's got the Gloves of Haste, Blades of Attack build. What are you... I think he was trying to build a Midas, uh, which is the one I was talking before about that gives you more farm and more experience. But I think he's given up on that idea and he's maybe going to build phase boots. So I'll, I'll, I'll so cut in there to say Sniper goes down again and yeah. you can continue. It's either that or he's going to go for the armlet of Modigian, which will give him a bit of attack speed and yeah, a bit of health. Those so. items do build into armlet, but yeah. he's, he's a long way from Invoker. Okay, Boca's going to kill DK here. It's straight up. That might yeah. have been a bit of misplay. He actually um, alacrity his range creep. So you can see that little range creep with the thing above it just before. Yep. The range creep was going crazy, attacking really fast. <laughs> but you're, uh, you're much better off using that on yourself because you attack much harder. So um, this Invoker, he's, he's not playing optimally, but he's, he's getting the kills. Yep. Ricky, does Ricky have Invis? That hero that just died there, Ricky Mara does, goes down again to Invoker. He usually has a spell that lets him go invisible. He actually hasn't leveled up any abilities. Yeah. So um, that's a bit different. Yeah. That is, that is, it's, is there. It's, uh, I just got to ask, in any, for someone who doesn't really know this game very well, it just seems like in no universe would you ever play that character that way. So, yeah. like, yeah. you'd be yeah. leveling up the abilities by now, you'd, yeah. so, what yeah. is going on? What, what do you reckon, Adzi? Is it uh, uh, unfamiliarity with the game? I think it's the unfamiliarity. By the way, Morphling and DK getting clowned on again by this Invoker. Invoker's got boots of travel already. Invoker's just crazy farm. Sorry, Adzi back to the... Yeah, maybe it was a bit of a... I'll cut it again. Sniper's about to die. Sniper gets <laughs> cogged up, shackled. Sniper, they have so many... But Ricky dies again. I'm not sure, even sure how that happened. Did he just walk up to the Invoker? Potentially, yeah, yeah. And Void dies again. Yeah. Actually, the hero doing the best on the Radiant side yeah. gets taken down by Legion Commander. Looks like at least Legion Commander actually made him work for that kill. Yeah. But oh, Shadow Blade on. Okay, Legion that's actually, Commander. that's probably more surprising. These other heroes with, uh, you know, no items and no abilities level up, they're pretty easy pickings. This Void, though, he actually has items and has an escape ability. And he actually had leveled up his abilities. So, um... You know, even even the guy who's kind of um, kind of seems the most comfortable on his hero, he's being taken out as well, Pete, which is not a good sign. No, it's not. It's uh, not a good sign for this Saint Eugene team, yeah, at and, all. And uh, this the snowball is starting to happen now, where they've gotten enough items and enough gold where they can just start pushing and taking down towers. And all they really need to do now is just wait for a few extra levels, especially on the Shadow Shaman, who can get his ultimate ability which is just spawns these giant snakes and they send out multiple attacks and you can put them next to a tower and it'll take the tower out very very quickly yeah they're great for killing towers yeah. so, and Voka's pretty good for killing towers as well yeah. but um so Adzi what, um, we're seeing a, what I'd say is maybe a bit of um inexperience bit of an inexperience and I think maybe there's maybe a bit of standing or, or something similar where oh Void gets away oh he's still dead he's still dead Void no yeah. They can't save him. Can't Morphling save knows. Him. Morphling just gets yeah, out of there. Waves forms away. Like, um, I want none of that. You don't want to watch Sky. Nobody wants any of that at the moment. That's yes. a good play, though, because <laughs> it's, it's very common in Dota to fall prey to the old um, trying to save your buddy syndrome. Yeah. So yep. you know, your buddy's dying, you're on there. Something that I've him. never, ever, ever done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, totally, me neither. Me, yeah, you know? yeah. But yeah, you, so what happens, Pete? Your buddy's dying. You want to save him. You run in there. You also die. He's waved in. And Boyd goes, I'm uh, sorry, Morphling goes down again to this legion. And um, as Adzi said, the snowball has started. Yeah. And like a big snowball, the bigger it gets, the harder it is to stop. Yep. And St. Eugene's there at the bottom of this mountain watching this, I'd say, almost an avalanche of a snowball coming at them. And uh, they're, they're trembling a bit. Well, almost, you look, at, you look at how fed these 
uh, two particular characters that we just saw from Hale there, those two players that we saw from Hale, how quickly they took that tower down. They're massive. Yeah. Yeah. They're on a roll now. They're on a roll. Um, our, um, our Ricky Maru, he's got items, but he actually hasn't taken them out of the base yet. And has he... Can we just look at Ricky one more time? Sorry. Still hasn't leveled up any abilities. This hero has ability that gives you permanent invisibility, Pete. Right. Do you, do you know what sounds pretty good in a game like this? Being invisible all the time. <laughs> all the time, Pete. Except when you're attacking. Yeah. But um, he's chosen not to get that, so I'd say he's probably not the most comfortable on the hero. So besides from a bit of experience coming out... Oh, DK is going to get slaughtered. Just, just... You could have had one of those heroes there guys and he still would have died so they come and they completely overkill him with four heroes clockwork's going in clockwork might be he's going real deep here clockwork might be going down sniper hit him please sniper just oh, the chrono sphere comes chronos. out yep. this is void's ultimate void has stopped time but it's still it's not they have no damage it's not enough they're still gonna please just even the tower yes there we go that one he got a kill they got a, they got a comeback kill yeah so now I've changed tax. No more, no more WA pride. Only underdogs to come back. Well, it was, it was a two-one trade there though. Yeah, like yeah. you know, so it still wasn't great. But at least someone, at least someone from Halo's dying. You know. Yeah. At least something's going on there. Okay, Shadow Shaman. He's been real confident. Comes up. DK stuns him. Punches him in the face. But a that, Dragon that's Knight. That's how you do the combo. That's that's a good way to do yeah. it. Yeah. But Dragon Knight with no items is not punching very hard. No. And Blobfish is just casually walking away. He doesn't. He wants none of that. Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't care at all. He's like, come yeah. at me, mate. Yeah. So what Clockwork just picked up is something called a, a rune, and it's a regen rune. So that'll regen his health and uh, mana over time. Big com combo coming out from Invoker. Lands it lovely. Another jewel win for the uh, Legion Commander. So what what the jewel win will. Do. Let's see what happens here. Oh, another. It's, it's just Ricky Maro dying with. Yeah. You know, if he was invisible there, it might have helped a little bit. Not to yeah. be. That, not to be too hard. Can I just say that was a moment where you can definitely tell that this Hail School is really communicating with each other. Yeah. They got the stall on that on that Saint Eugene uh, character there, and then as a team just moved as one behind him to block him off from being able to get away. Yeah. So Hail School, they actually like drafted themselves, picked themselves heroes that combo up really well with each other. Yeah. And um, if you're versing kind of inexperienced people like Eugene seem to be, they're, you know, like, you almost don't even need it, but they're doing it anyway. They're just, they're, you know, they're taking it seriously. They're not messing around. They want this win. Um, DK, stuck in the cogs. DK is a very strong hero, even level 5. He's slow, slowly being, it's a slow, painful death for DK. Two godlike heroes. Void, he's getting away. So I'm not sure what Void's saying to his team, guys, but, you know, guys, stop, stop just running in and chain feeding this invoker but it doesn't see he doesn't seem to be able to help you know yeah and so He's this is the real dangerous stage for saint eugene's right now is they're going to go up what's called high ground so they're going up on taking out the and the void goes down again the combo was actually a bit messed up there from invoker since he has nothing to actually stop the void leaping away but it, it, it doesn't matter the legion commander covers his back runs in there and destroys the uh the void dk goes down again and they just they just dive in their base they don't care this clockwork's being hit by the tier four towers, Pete. The void goes down. Wolf goes down again. What's he doing? Clockwork it might go clock down. Clock oh, no, going he down. definitely yeah. goes down yeah. that way. <laughs> so oh. now they've, they've uh, moved on from the tower to the racks. And so when the racks are taken out, you see those little creeps. Those creeps get stronger. And so it'll push the lane out even more and push it towards uh, right the radiant side or the green side right now. So it's going to be you even get, harder to come back. You get uh, super creeps, yeah. and they get stronger and stronger, but most importantly, P, they're worth less gold in experience. So the snowball just gets worse and worse and worse. It's going to keep snowballing. Yeah. Lovely Chrono coming out from Void. I dare say that the um, the Hail School, they actually let themselves get Chrono like that because they're, they're unkillable at this point. They actually, the only thing that's going to kill them is these tier 4 towers. And you can see, Pete, they keep running in. They're getting hit by tier 4 towers. Strongest towers in the game. They don't, they don't care. DK yeah. runs in very valiant, you know, very knightly of him, you know, appropriate to his name, trying to save his uh, towers. Yep. It doesn't doesn't matter, you know. Jewel comes out on Ricky, more damage. Alacri on top of LC, like he needed it, does even more damage. So what, what what happens when he duels him and he wins that duel is he gets extra damage applied permanently to his hero. Permanently. So if you want to, yeah. So we've got an extra 98 damage for LC because he's won so many duels right now. And uh, w what would you say about this game, Azzy? Because it's getting to the point where, you know, um, an absolute stomp. An it's absolute, a wipe. Yeah. It's it's an absolute it's a wipe. stomp. Yeah. Uh, so what would um, what would Radiant need to win this game? 
Um, they would really need to start talking to each other and try and take out at least one person, whether it be the, to start with the supports. Okay. That's all you can do I is start Can I just ask you guys, have you ever seen in any uh, match, whether it be throughout the pro circuit, the international, a team being stomped as much as, as St. Eugene's is right now actually come back? To in a, a, in a like competitive this? game, in as much as this? Season? I would say no. I would say what... Uh, what St. Eugene's w needs to win here is um, all of Hale School, their computers need to explode. <laughs> <laughs> and the admins, which wouldn't happen, oh, the admins rough. would have to let the game play on. Right. And even then, the game would still be pretty close. Gotcha. The, the, the is there a mercy rule? I don't, I don't think, I'm not sure. I know there is in, you know, like uh, Little League AF fo a AFL football. Well, I'm but I don't think there is in Dota. There's not much mercy in Dota. It's a pretty brutal game. Yeah. It is. I mean, we there might be the opportunity for St. Eugene's to GG out so they'll say GG and, and let the other team win, which, I mean, based on oh, where actually, they're at at the moment. Void, right? void kills Shadow Shaman. So, you know, at this point... That's what they need to do. Pete, at this yeah. point, you're more fighting for, you know, your dignity. You just want to kill them a few times because they've killed you so much. You don't want to just leave the game, right? You want to kill them a few times before, gotcha, yeah. before you're out of the game. Yeah. Yeah. Me personally, I would be, you know, if um, if if my team we were getting stopped this bad, you know, my teammates would probably be so demoralised, we'd be we'd be out of the game in an instant. You know, we'd right. be yeah. we'd be getting out of there. But we don't want to we don't want to encourage that. You know, for the high no, you school fight, teams. You fight till the last fight. minute. You, you fight, know? fight for the pride of your esports club and yeah. um, fight hard. But you can yeah. tell that you know that obviously there were a couple of players on St Eugene's that weren't. Really into it today. Um, also, also, it's a learning experience. You, know, exactly you can go back, right. you can look at this game, what's happened, watch the replay, you know, see the items they've built, see the way they play, and you can kind of copy that to a certain extent. That really helps you as a player and a team you know, get better. I mean, look, here's a yeah. perfect example. SD going all by himself. Oh, that see, took everything. See, and, and what happens sometimes in games like this, if they're a little bit more close, the winning team gets really, really, you know, overconfident, runs at them, and you can, uh, you know, quote unquote, you can throw the game by getting too confident. Yeah. Now this might be so one-sided that's actually, actually impossible. But we saw that just then by that Shadow Demon running in and solo killing a DK, but to dying for it. Yep. Which is not something that usually happens, like in at this particular point. So it's it's pretty indicative that this um, this game's pretty close to being open. See, Over. even the game is telling them yeah. somebody killed them. Yeah. Yep, godlike. You know, if you see your opponent is godlike with a double kill, it's a bit worrying. We see uh, Sniper and Morphling going down there that much of a fight. I would, um, I would love to see the players from St. Eugene's. Uh, it sounds pretty basic, but leveling up abilities and uh, buying items that are gold. You can see Ricky Maru there. He's floating 1.2k gold, which is... Uh, that's some, that's some pretty significant items you can have there, Pete. Well, it oh. still appears that he hasn't actually purchased anything. He's purchased yeah. something, but he hasn't brought it out of his... Out of his he's got it in the stash, in his right. base. It's not on his hero. Oh, good God. That they was just one hit almost. Just yeah. took out Sniper straight away. That's They're getting one hit. Their final tier four's yeah. towers are dying. Yeah. Um, what yeah, those, those giant snakes I was talking about before. That yeah. big damage. So, so Adzi, some high, as this game gets wrapped up, some, uh, some high-level analysis. Well, what, what did you like? What didn't you like? Well, I, I love the picks from uh, Hale School. It was a well-balanced. They had a lot of lead-in. So you had the, the Shadow Demon to the Sunstrike, which we saw a couple of different times. We had the Amplified Damage from Shadow Demon working quite well with the Jewel. So those kinds of picks were really... They kind of were very cohesive, actually. They worked work together quite well. And um, the uh, Radiant side really need to work on the picks. Stay away from cores. They need some actual supports there. And to, to level up the, their abilities, Ricky being uh, having invisibility, he's a really good roamer. He can go around, he can make plays happen. So it's... We can see their... Um, Five uh, to 56. Yeah, yeah, we can see that Hale School, you know, despite despite everyone's best, you know, everyone's, you know, very shockingly actually closed the game, of course. It was pretty one-sided there. Yep. Very one-sided game. Uh, actually, uh, St. Eugene's never in the lead at one, one point in the game. And Hale School very comfortably, very confidently, just, just took it away. Yeah. You can see Invoker, extremely rich. Yeah. Had a yeah. very, very easy Had game. Had a lot of good kills that were set up for him, so he could just uh, steamroll, which is really cool. I want to shout out to, to the Faceless Void. He 
under all the pressure that he was under, he actually, he, I reckon he held his own, he did his best. And so that, that was that was really good to see there. A bit of sportsmanship. And yeah, yeah. Trying to get everybody along. So, he, yeah. He definitely, he, he, was, he definitely fought it. Also, like to see the team not GGing out early. They waited till their ancient actually blows up. Yeah. You know, staying end. strong. That's right. That real, yeah. you know, fighting spirit, that yeah. real Aussie, you know, digger spirit. You know, don't call it quits. No. Don't Keep going at it. them. Yep. That's really good. And so what, what we're seeing right now is a bit of item progression. So you can kind of see, you know, like there's a brown boots, which will then eventually lead to the gloves of haste just above that, to the um, power treads. And so you have the ring of the quiller on the dragon knight. It's not really a, a usual pickup for a dragon knight because he's not really in a... An agility and, hero. Uh, you can see a bit of a disparity there. The top team, Radiant, the losing oh, team. Oh, yeah. Like the two. Not, not many yeah. items being picked up. Yeah. And the bottom team, every item you could ever want being picked up. So yeah. pretty um, pretty, pretty rough. And pretty quickly, if you know. So that's a 10-minute slot. You know, you'd usually see that over 20 minutes. We've got a 22-minute yeah. stout shield coming out. Usually an item you start the game with. Real... Real rough stuff, Pete. Real one-sided for yeah. um, for Hale there. Well, it was unfortunate for St. Eugene's, but uh, obviously couldn't get the, the job done today. But a massive win for Hale School, really planting their exclamation mark on that game. And um, it's good to see that as well, because it means as we lead towards the final series for Dota 2 for uh, season 2018, you know, it's good for them to do that because they've got a couple of real tough competitors in St. Norbert's and GSCC. That's going to be good they matches. Are, they are going to be great matches. Top of the table, those two, but it's good to ha see Hale School actually come out with a match like this and say, no, look, we've been practicing, we've been going hard, we're communicating, we're really starting to get our bearings on this game, and we're coming for you guys. So, to those of you watching at twitch.tv slash flag test, thank you so much. We appreciate your time today. Thanks for watching. A big thank you to you, TCG from Fox Gaming, and also you, Adzi, the casual, the casual. <laughs> I would say uh, uh, we'll see a little bit more from you. I reckon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Thanks. If you want to check out um, uh, more from Fox Gaming and TCG, check them out on their socials and uh, have a look for Bruce Leet across socials as well. If you want to see more of Adzi, appreciate your time, and uh, we will catch you next week on Twitch TV slash Flak Test and across all socials. Just before we go, don't forget tomorrow. 10 a.m. Australian Western Standard Time. It's our weekly TV show back for round six with all of your news, plus games and prizes as well. We've got two tickets for those of you that live in Sydney or are on your way there next weekend to go and check out the Gfinity Elite Series. Actually be in the uh, audience. That's going to be really good. Absolutely, yeah, it's yeah, going to be. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. Yeah. No tickets um, for WA, Pete. No What's tickets for WA. On? Well, you know, the flights, need a plane ticket. Flights, flights are oh, right. yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> We're working on that. The, the, the logistics. <laughs> <laughs> we start small, guys. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. We start with a couple of ticket giveaway if you live in Sydney and then yeah. we'll get there, right? Yeah, right. Um, also, uh, we have Hearthstone 1v1 at this point in time. It's our next free-to-play high school esports community club event. You can sign up at play.flagtest.com if you are a Flag Test registered club and uh, winner takes away a $50 battle.net um, card and the second place gets a $20 as well. So you can put that towards your decks and stuff like that. Again, great to have you along. Thanks for your company and we'll catch you next week right here on twitch.tv slash flagtest. Thanks, mate.